This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. 22 years ago to this day, my friends, your old buddy Josh took his last drink of alcohol. 525, 1997. Here it is, 525, 2019. I was up in New Hampshire, my good friend Jason's house, who I was with, uh, in the Army with. I had a couple buddies with me from D.C. I don't remember if my brother was there or not, but uh, Jason lived in, uh, in Ashwa, New Hampshire. And uh, we went to some bar that night, and uh, we just got, we got just <laughs> destroyed. <laughs> Nothing that night happened. Nothing that night happened. I just, I don't, I remember I got so drunk, I, you know, I was puking everywhere. I, you know, I don't even remember. Uh, don't even remember what happened that night when I woke up the next morning and I just uh, I, <laughs> I was still I was so drunk that I was still drunk when I woke up the next morning if that makes sense even though I was hung over already it's uh, one of those things that and I don't drink hard alcohol I just drink beer I love beer man oh I love beer I mean I don't say I loved it in the in the uh, <clears throat> past tense I say I love it but I can't drink it and thankfully, I never got in the brown stuff. I guess whiskey and gin, whatever the brown stuff is, I guess that makes you so surly, especially if you got some Irish in you and a German, which I have both, which is not a good combination, of course. But anyway, woke up that morning, uh, just, you know, two sheets of the wind, had to drive back to D.C. that day, and just, uh, and I said, you know, I just, I've got to stop this. i got to stop it. That wasn't, nothing happened that night. Like, I didn't get in a fight, I, nothing happened. I didn't get a DWI, nothing like that. I said, okay, this is gonna turn my life around. It's just, I remember waking up and just saying, dude, you're, you know, you're 20, but I was, I guess I was 26 at that point, about to graduate college. I said, it's, it's time to, to grow up. And uh, for me, growing up meant giving up alcohol. And uh, now look, I wasn't a raging drunk. You know, I, I didn't, uh, like I said in an email I just sent out today about this, I didn't live in a van down by the river. I mean, I still had a job. But I was just, it was getting silly to the point where I was just not, uh, not living the life I wanted to live, that's for sure. And uh, and so finally I just said, I'm done. And uh, and I never, never partook again. That's not true. There was one time, uh, Charlotte and I were at American Legion, uh, uh, a celebration of some sort. I forgot it was like a Thanksgiving day or maybe I can't remember. Anyway, Veterans Day thing. And it was a, a meal they're serving with alcohol. And uh, we're sitting there and I said, I want a ginger ale. And the dude brought back the uh, the drink. It was a ginger ale, some kind of alcohol. I remember taking a sip. I was like, whoa, ho, ho, get that away from me. And uh, yeah, I mean, I remember I was like, I, I, my face was like flushed and stuff. And I was like, whoa, when I said, get it away from me. And uh, I remember telling my wife, I'm drunk, I'm drunk. I was just joking, but still, it's like, that was the only other time alcohol has ever touched these lips. So when I say uh, it's been 22 years since alcohol hasn't touched these lips, that's a lie, but pretty close. Not deliberately, let's put it that way. So, oh, and over those course of those 22 years, uh, it's, it's, it hasn't really been a challenge to avoid alcohol. I still, I miss drinking and eating crabs. Uh, you know, I lived and went to high school in Maryland and I just remember, you know, I worked at a, uh, a crab uh, house, a uh, local, owned by some Greeks actually, right there on Georgia Ave in uh, Silver Spring, Chesapeake Crab House. Chesapeake Bay, I can't remember, man, Chesapeake Crab, uh, yeah, Chesapeake Crab House. And uh, man, we'd, we'd take the leftovers <clears throat> that, that they had, because there's tons of leftovers and they had to do something with them. And we'd bring them home and uh, and just we just get free and just drink beers and bring them. Uh, it was just it was just fun. I mean, I like drinking. I'm not gonna lie. I had fun drinking 95 percent of the time. That's all there is to it. I had fun. I enjoyed it immensely. I was just uh, you know when you're a young, kind of angry, you know, kid that's you know always I don't want to say fearful but nervous. Uh, drinking is uh, a way to avoid all that. There's no other way around it. I mean, in fact, that's what happens with drunks. They get nervous about stuff, so they they drink to calm their nerves. Uh, unfortunately, they have to start drinking earlier and earlier and earlier to calm their nerves because uh, they're. I mean, they just can't. Eventually, they can't function without alcohol, which is sad. I was never like that. But again, a couple beers, man. I was freaking. You know, like, I was party man. I loved it. I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie. I do miss. Drinking beers with the fellas, eating crab legs over a uh, a table outside, just you know, one of those uh, <clears throat> picnic tables outside. 
like just getting drunk and stupid, listening to loud music. Man, I, I miss that, that's for sure. In the Army, we'd do the same thing, not necessarily with crab legs, but just we'd go out, you know, just get in the woods or something like that, and then, you know, after we got back from the field and just get hammered, man. It was, it was fun. And everyone just talking smack, and, you know, sometimes the girls would be there with us. And it, was, it was just fun. No other way around that. Uh, no other way around that. I miss that to some degree, but it's not so much of the drink as more of the, uh, you know, just having fun with your friends. Uh, but, you know, that's fun when you're younger. As you get older, that becomes less and less fun, becomes more and more obnoxious, to be honest with you. And what else do I miss? I miss a pint of Guinness. I've said that a couple times before. I love Guinness. I could drink, oh, man, hmm. I could drink a pint of Guinness with, a, with everybody. You know, in the wintertime, eat some beef stew and a pint of Guinness. Oh, man, that's, that's the life right there. I miss that. Um... That's pretty much it. I mean, I used to love IPA. You can't hop it up too much for me. You know, I love the Sierra Nevada. Sierra had a porter. They had a uh, oatmeal stout, if memory serves. I love the pale ales. Oh, man. I, no, Indian IPAs, not pale ales, IPAs, uh, which was hopped up. Now, the reason they did that was they called IPAs to keep the beer fresh uh, when they're moving, you know, from uh, Britain to India. They had to hop it up big time to keep the beer fresh. At least that's the way I understood it and the proof of I worked at. So it was hopped up and had that distinct taste and smell and character. It's good, man. I miss that. Ultimately, I just miss hanging out with the fellas, so though. Just drinking beer and acting, you know, just being stupid and listening to loud music. I, I enjoy that immensely, shooting pool, something like that. But with that said, for every uh, 10 wonderful times like that. There's one would I be stupid, you know, want to get in fights, just yelling at people, just the whole thing. Man, probably not. Yeah, I guess about 10% of the time. And uh, and I didn't like that. I'd wake up the next morning just like, dude, what the? You know what I'm saying? I just, uh, yeah, yeah. And only but for the grace of God did I not get a DWI, did I not kill somebody. I mean, when we're in the army, we'd get drunk and fights would happen and sometimes people would get hurt. And uh, one time people got hurt pretty badly and thankfully, uh, nothing happened from it where he wasn't hurt too badly but it, it could have gone the other way and uh, that was just that was bad and I remember I mean I remember being scared let's just put that away and uh, none of that would have happened if I was sober it's just all there is to it you look back you say everything I've screwed up on there's always one constant variable alcohol so remove that variable things aren't gonna be perfect uh, for heaven's sake but things are gonna be uh, much more easy to contend with much more easy to deal with you're probably not going to make the mistakes that you've made in the past because of your drinking ways. And, uh, and that's exactly what's happened. I mean, when I look back now, um, I, you know, my life has been wonderful without question. I haven't, I've avoided a lot of situations that, you know, previously I would have found myself in just because I don't drink. Because when you're not drinking, you're able to give yourself more of a uh, ability to deal with the reality on the ground. Walk away, essentially. A lot of times just walk away. Say, I'm not going to be part of that. Let me go avoid situations that are uh, are tensing up you know like one of the things about getting older is like hey only drunks and cops are on the road at night so uh get you know stay stay away from those and, and you'll be fine and now i'm just uh well now it's just better my friends it's just better so i uh i'm, I'm just i'm obliged i'm blessed I did go to AA for a while, and that was wonderful because you get to meet some real drunks who really came up from the gutter, and you're like, man, what happened, and how those guys survive, and then you realize, hey, I wasn't that bad, but everyone's got a story. For me, that was what it was about AA. Everybody's got a story, and what you see now might look hoity-toity, might look in charge and control, but you don't know what that's, uh, what's behind. You just don't know what's behind the camera. And, uh, and actually, it's, it's worth it to find out, it really is, to ask, hey, how'd you get to where you are? And uh, some of the stories you'll hear are just uh, are incredible, are incredible, and uh, it's humbling. So this is today the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. I'm just happy to be here, man. The guy whose house I last drank in, uh, he since passed, died of an overdose uh, 10 years or so ago went the other path and that's the thing with drinking is that uh, it does lead to other stuff and I don't care what people say marijuana is a gateway without question alcohol is a gateway too you say marijuana is you know look, I think all drugs I think prohibition is stupid I mean you're not going to keep people from doing what they want to do I've always thought that 
but let's not pretend that marijuana is as wholesome as freaking drinking uh, some water. I mean, my goodness, people act like marijuana is so good. And it's not. It does lead to worse and worse drugs. Not for everybody, but for enough people it does. It's a gateway drug. No other way around that. The biggest gateway drug is alcohol. You start with alcohol, you say, yeah, I want to try something more forceful. You start with marijuana, yeah, I want to try something more forceful. And that's the uh, that's what an addict has to contend with, and that's what they deal with, that they're never satisfied. And you know, C.S. Lewis talks about this in the screw tape letters, that the more and more you need that stimulus, the less and less it delivers. And that's actually a satanic trick. Literally, Satan in C.S. Lewis screw tape letters, he talks about that. They get more and more addicted. I don't have to give I, I give less and less, and I keep them coming for more and more. It's actually it's incredibly uh, informative and profound. You know, the more addicted you get, the more you need, and the more Satan delivers, and the more you need, which means the more you go to his realm. It's nuts. It's nuts, man. Stay strong, my brothers and sisters out there. If today is your day, remember one minute, minute at a time. Will I be sober 10 years from now? Man, I've got no idea, but I will be sober right now. I will be sober right now. That's what I can control. I can control my inputs. That's it. I can't control the outputs. My input is right now, I will not drink alcohol. So if today's your day. Start with right now. I would suggest to you, you wake up in the morning and start. Don't have that first cigarette in the morning. I'm telling you right now, when I quit smoking, the, the hardest thing was trying to quit smoking after I've already had some cigarettes. Just wake up in the morning with a fresh set of lungs and say, yeah, I'm not doing this today. It's easier. Not easy, but it's easier than trying to start midway through the day. Start a fresh slate, a fresh day, and say, today's the day. But why about five days from now? I don't know. I just today. How about two hours from now? I don't know. Just a minute. Just right now. That's all you can do. Control right now. Control the next right now. Control the next right now. So all you can do is control the right now. God bless.